well? Good? Okay, thanks for coming. I thought we didn't have a lot of people for this presentation because this is introduction to WordPress and I believe a lot of people here may not know WordPress, but thanks for, for being here like 9.30 in the morning. So probably when you, my name is Rafael Scapin, I work at Dawson College uh, since 2008. I work with educational technology over there. And I also teach WordPress, I teach two courses there, introduction to WordPress and how to create an online store using WordPress. We use WooCommerce and that I'll tell you about this at the end. So probably when you see this, if you'd see this in the internet, you'd th think this title would be a clickbait or uh, fake news. Like uh, 30 minutes, how can I learn WordPress? It's not so, it's kind of true. I'll t do my best to so that I understand WordPress. So how are you today? Are you lost or very lost regarding WordPress? Okay. How many of you here have tried in the past to use WordPress? Raise your hands. So you know WordPress a little bit. So you've been working with WordPress. Good, good to know. Okay, so what you're gonna see today is I'll uh, ask some questions that my students usually have when I give my course. Like, where do I start? Do I need to host my website, yes or no? Website or blog or both? How can I choose a template? How can I add a menu? How can I add multimedia to my presentation, to my WordPress? And I'll open to questions. So where do I start? First question, I want to use WordPress for free. If you, if you need this, if you don't wanna pay anything, then you go to wordpress.com, okay? The thing there, like, you, they give you a free account, like your name.wordpress.com. So this is free. So I wanna host my WordPress website. Then you need to pay. Then you need to basically buy a domain name and choose in a hosting provider. We're gonna cover this in a few minutes. How many of you here have a domain name? Bought a domain name. How many of you here are hosting? Oh, some people are hosting, amazing. Okay. So if you wanna use WordPress for free, you just go to wordpress.com, they give you like, you choose a name, and then you start either a website, a blog, or both. There's some cons though. Um, there's limited theme support, because it's free. You cannot install plugins for some secure reasons. And limited monetization, you cannot sell ads over there, limited SEO, search engine optimization control, and limited analytics, okay? So there's some cons, but because it's free, I mean, it's okay, you know, you're not paying anything, they're giving it for free, and it's fine. And by the way, uh, many people start like this, they start with a uh, free account, and sometime later, they upgrade, they start to hosting with WordPress. So that's one of the ways they monetize uh, the thing, okay? So you can do this if you want. But if you wanna host your WordPress, then you need a domain name, you need to buy a domain name, and you're gonna need a hosting provider, okay? The pros, you have full theme support. You can install any plugins you want. Uh, you, have, uh, you can monetize your stuff, there's no issue. You can use all SEO features you want, and it, you can install like very powerful analytics inside, okay? So that's basically, the difference, the pros and cons of both. Buy a domain name. This is many of my students, they ask me, you know, I want to start my website, I want to buy a nice domain name. So domain name is like this. You have a name, we call it a domain name, and you have a domain extension. Of course, the most used one are .com, .net, .org, and they start in the States. There's no reference to country. If I buy a .com, I don't know which country it is. And some people say that when Americans started this, because they're the center of the universe, they didn't need to put the .us. So, uh, but in fact, there is a .us. Not a lot of people use this in the States, but uh, it exists. In Canada, you can only have nowadays .ca. In the past, you used to have the provincial ones, .on.ca for Ontario, .qc.ca for Quebec, but nowadays, they don't exist anymore. And um, the, the reason for this, I, I sent an email to Syrah.ca in Canada asking this question, why you don't have, let's say, a .com.ca, .net.ca, something like this. They replied back, say, you know, we're gonna keep it simple. That was their answer, which is fair. So, but you don't have. So if you're gonna start a .ca today, it's only .ca. There's no .com, 
no dot net, anything. And then you have the specific ones, dot info, dot mobile, dot TV, dot FM, dot Asia, jobs, and dot uh, triple X. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the info, there is one dot info in Montreal, probably you guys use every day or once in a while. Do, do you know which one it is? In Montreal, dot info. There is a dot info website in Montreal. No. STM.info. Yay! We have a .info in Montreal. Many people use it. Do you know where is .tv from? .tv? No, .tv is from a country, and they make revenues selling this extension, .tv. It's a tiny little island in the Pacific, close to Australia, Tuvalu. Okay? Imagine a tiny little island, they sell their domain, to other countries and make revenue, okay? The same for .fm, it's another country, Federation of Micronesia, okay? It's another island in the Pacific too. Okay, so you have many. And in Canada, you can register domain names uh, using French uh, characters like the Cidil and the, uh, with the accents. For example, if you wanna create a, a website like sava.ca, you can register the Cidil Okay, but what I tell people, if you can register both with the, without also the, the accent, it's good. Because let's say some people, they, they, they don't know how to, or their keyboard does not have the CD, or they have no idea how to make the CD. So if you wanna do this, please buy both, if it's available, okay? Otherwise, change the name. Uh, but we have it here in Canada. And in Quebec, starting 2014, you can buy a dot .Quebec, okay? So you can have a name, dot .quebec. Personally, I think it's too big. Like, uh, dot, imagine if Saskatchewan decided to do something like this, you know? Dot Saskatchewan, I don't think it's gonna work. <laughs> so, but for many years, they, they started in Quebec like to, to, to look for three letters only, because autonomous regions, they have three letters. Countries have two letters, and autonomous regions like Catalonia, dot cat, C-A-T. Many people use the, the dot cat for their pets. So if you have a cat, you can create a website for your cat. But uh, in Quebec, years ago, they tried a QBC. It didn't work for obvious reasons in French, because when you read QBC in French, it's not good, right? <laughs> so they decide, okay, let's go dot .Quebec. It's uh, since 2014. Plus, besides this, we have other zillions, more than 500 new domain extensions, okay? So some are quite expensive, okay? Some are kind of $1,000 per year, which, but on average, like in the $50, 100, some are expensive. For example, imagine uh, .yoga, .family, .fun, .tech, .guru, .whatever. There's even a .college. Recently, Dawson College bought Dawson.college. So we have this, this redirects to our website, okay? So there are many new ones. And uh, to buy a domain name, you just go to either a registrar, there are many, I forgot to put Hover here, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, but Hover is a, one of our sponsors. It's also a registrar, so we have GoDaddy, Namecheap, Gandhi. Gandhi is one of the biggest ones, they have more than 500 extensions. So you can only go there and check your Something you can do also, you can buy what we call a vanity extension, vanity domain name. You take the last two letters of your last name, for example, and see if it's available. For example, my last name is Scapin, S-C-A-P-I-N. I-N is for India. So I bought my vanity extension, S-C-A-P.I-N, so I can have my email, Raphael at S-C-A-P.I-N. But I use this for my, it's my URL shortener for Twitter. So I have my scap.in slash but instead of bit.ly, whatever, I use my personal one. So you can do this, take the last two letters and see if it's available, you can buy your vanity uh, domain for your, uh, to use. And the hosting provider, we have many hosting providers available. Um, the ones here are our partners here, Bluehost, Planet Hoster, GoDaddy, DreamHost, WP Engine, SiteGround, and Web Hosting Canada. Um, most of them, when you uh, host, they also give you for free your domain. They register the domain for you, and they also, as long as you keep them hosting with them, 
the domain is free, so you can do this, okay? Personally, I, I like to go to a registrar and shop around for a hosting provider. This is the way I do, but you guys are free to, to do this if you want. Then people tell me, okay, but how much I'm gonna pay to host, is it expensive? You can always I start with what we call a shared hosting plan. Currently, you're gonna pay, let's say, $5 a month for this kind of thing. And what's the big difference between a shared hosting and a dedicated hosting? A shared hosting, imagine a company has a big computer, like a server, it slices the server for different users. So let's say in one server, you can have 1,000 domains living there. So that's the reason it's not expensive. Whereas a dedicated hosting, it's a big server for just you. So you manage like this big server for your domain. That's the big difference. So like price-wise, like this is from uh, Web Host Canada. You can have a $3.99 a month. We're talking about Canadian dollars, okay? Because if it was US, it would be like 100 Canadian. Just kidding, <laughs> going downhill. Um, and then the pro, like they have a 50, 59. So you can start like this. And look at that. For the pro one, you have a free domain, okay? On the right side, they give you a free domain. So you don't need to pay the, the fees for the domain registration, okay? So it's not expensive to start. So when you start and you have your hosting provider, this is what you're gonna do. You need to install WordPress. WordPress is like a software. Imagine you install a software in your computer, okay? But in this case, you're installing a software in a big computer called a server, okay? So the first time you go, to the dashboard of your hosting provider, you're gonna need to look for WordPress, and there is WordPress over there, you click, and then you install. You're gonna see a, a screen like this, and they're gonna ask you where you're gonna install WordPress. You can install your WordPress in the entire domain, okay, this is my personal domain name, scapin.org, or you can select a folder or directory over there. Let's say I wanna install in my xyz.ca slash test. I can do this. Or I can install the entire domain. It's up to you. The default, of course, is to install in your entire domain, like you're going to have seen over there, like here, okay? So when you do this, you're gonna have, this is just an example, your xyz.ca. By the way, this domain is taken. I don't know who writes their xyz.ca, but it's taken. Uh, <laughs> when you install WordPress, to go to your website, you just type, of course, xyz.ca, you go to your website. But to have access to the dashboard, to start to work with WordPress, you need to go to slash wp-admin, okay? So when you go to slash wp-admin, you're gonna see this login screen. You're gonna see a username and password over there. So when you do this, you log in there, you're gonna see your dashboard, okay? So you're gonna see posts, media pages, comments, forms, appearance, plugins, users, settings. And the first setting you guys need to do is to go to settings, reading, and tell WordPress if your website is gonna be a real website or just a blog or both, okay? You do this here. So you log into the dashboard, settings reading, and then you choose my website, my homepage is gonna display a static page, could be my homepage, and a post page. If I don't want a blog, I leave it blank, the post page, but I can have both, okay? So this is the first setup you guys need to do. The second one is to uh, choose a theme. And there are many, many themes available for WordPress. If you click themes over there, you're gonna see some default ones. The free ones, the 2013, 2015, 2014, 2017, 2016, all the 20 uh, free uh, themes that we have, you can choose a free one. Or if you wanna go to wordpress.org slash themes, you see a list of all those uh, themes. Or you can buy one if you want. What's the big difference? Um, the interface, the, the usability, they're like more user-friendly to, to use than the, other, the free ones. They have more features, in fact. 
So we have the biggest uh, repositories are ThemeForest, Mojo, Colorlib, and many, many others. Okay? So you can go there and pay. And the price is not so expensive. Like you're going to pay, let's say, 40 bucks, 50 bucks uh, for a theme. It's not expensive at all. It's a good investment for your, your new website. Okay? And uh, after you install a theme, you start to work, please install an under construction pay plugin. This, why? Because when people are gonna visit your domain, they don't wanna, they don't want people to see like, oh my God, I'm still working here, it's not ready yet. So you put like a, a cover to the front page. And then you can choose any layout you want. For example, this is a great plugin called under construction that creates this. So you can, you can choose like different layouts or you can even put like your, um, uh, the social media uh, links for your website or leave like a space for an email so people can contact you. And then when you're ready to launch, you send an email to everybody. Hi guys, next week is gonna be the official launching of my website. So you can collect emails as well. So people don't see what you're doing. Of course you see what you're doing, but people don't. So this is like a uh, cover to your um, website. Um, content creation. So it's very simple uh, to use, uh, to create content in a WordPress. So when you go to the dashboard, for example, you're gonna create a page, you click on the left sidebar, there's pages. You're gonna add a new page, you just put the name of the page, put some content. Uh, this is the editor, the editor for 15 years. This is being like the way WordPress is. But WordPress is changing. So there is gonna be in version five, we're currently in version 498. In version five, it's coming in the next months, we're, we're gonna have the new editor called Gutenberg. Okay, you can install Gutenberg as a plugin right now, but let's say if you don't wanna use this in your website, there is a website you can test Gutenberg, okay? It's called testgutenberg.com. So you go there, you can play around, you can see the new things, okay? This is gonna be the new editor coming to WordPress. The biggest change in 15 years in WordPress. There's a lot of division in the WordPress community. Some people, oh, I love it, I hate it. Like currently, if you go to check, the star rating is like two and a half. So like half, half. Okay, so some people, yeah. But I mean, I, I think it's, personally, I think it's, it, it's a nice change. Okay, so I've been playing around and I like it. But uh, feel free to go and test yourselves, okay? The other thing is how to create a navigation menu. Of course, you need the people to navigate your website. You have your menu, very simple too. So you go to your dashboard, appearance, and menus. All the pages you create are gonna be on the left side. You're gonna see over there, so I have, let's say, about, home, and blog. I click create a new menu, and then the menu is gonna appear over there. So let me show you briefly how to do that. This is my personal website. I have currently uh, three pages about blog and home. I'm gonna create a menu right now. So I go over here, there is no menu. I'm gonna create a menu, click in menu. I'm gonna call it just menu. I see my page on the left sidebar. I just check all of them. I'm gonna add those pages to my menu. Okay, they appear over here. I can drag and drop, okay, to move around. I'm gonna save my menu. Another thing I need to do the, here, some themes, they have different menus, so I need to, to change your, uh, which one you're gonna use. I'm gonna use only the primary menu over here, so I select it over here, and I click change, save change. So let me check how this is gonna look like. Look, my menu is over there. Okay, very simple about and everything, okay? Another thing that people ask me, can I add like images, audio, and videos? Let's say I have a, uh, a video from YouTube I wanna put over there from Vimeo or audio from sound, uh, SoundCloud. You can. Another thing I tell you, if you have videos, don't upload videos to WordPress because they're big files, okay? It takes a lot of time, they're not compressed, what I suggest to you, use a third party uh, company like YouTube or Vimeo to host because they compress, they give, ev they give everything for you, plus you can share those videos. They give you like a script to share. So let's say I wanna go to WordPress right now, 
to, sorry, to YouTube right now. And uh, I want to grab a video over there to put inside my website. Let's say WordCamp. Let's see if they have something. Montreal. Look at that. I have one from WordCamp here. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go share and bad. I put a show more here. I always uncheck the so, show suggested videos when the video finished because I have no control about this. I don't want to get embarrassed when, you know, uh, Google shows something, you know, I'm, so I just uncheck here. I can select the size, but the size is okay. So I'm going to grab this script over here. Go back to my uh, WordPress, go to my pages. Let's say I'm going to put this in my about page. Under text, there's visual and text because this script, I must put it here like a script, paste, update, and uh, let's take a look. Voila, I can run the video inside my, my page, okay? It's very useful, so very simple to do. And for uh, audio is the same, SoundCloud, for example, SoundCloud is an audio repository, they have music, you can even create your own channel, you can record your stuff, you can upload your stuff there, it's the same idea. They give you a script and then you can um, do this over there. Okay, let me see something. Um, yeah, talking about the resources, people ask me, okay, how can I, I'm gonna start with WordPress, uh, in Montreal, what kind of resource do I have here? There are many, okay? For example, in Facebook, for those of you who use Facebook, there is um, uh, wpmontreal.org Facebook. It's for beginners or... But bef when you go there, before asking a question, please search first, okay? And then if you don't find your question, then you post. Because people, they receive like zillions of questions every day. There's a meetup in Montreal for WordPress as well. So you guys can, you know, join other people, talk about WordPress. And there's a great website that I recommend to everybody. It's called WP Beginner. It's, uh, they have many, many articles, uh, like for beginners in WordPress. How do I do this? How do I do that? Using WordPress. So uh, this is one I, I recommend you uh, to, to go. So, and plus there's like zillions of other websites, but those are more like the first two are Montreal oriented. So. And it's bilingual as well, so you can ask questions in English and French, it doesn't matter, okay? So another thing, like at Dawson College, we have many, many courses uh, in computer science. We have HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, WordPress, SQL. We have three levels of WordPress. We have introduction to WordPress, uh, intermediate WordPress, and advanced WordPress. Um, those courses are subsidized by Employee Quebec. You pay two dollars an hour, okay, it's nothing, okay? So in order to check those course, you can just go dawsoncollege.qc.ca slash ctd, it's for Center for Training Development, dot eq, eq is employee Quebec, okay? So the only, there's some prereqs you need to, to have, it must be working, okay? And you need to apply this to your job, okay, if you're not working, Employee Quebec does not allow you to take the course, okay? I'm gonna start two courses now in September, uh, the second week of September, Introduction to WordPress and uh, Online Store using WooCommerce, okay? So for those of you who'd like to start or know a friend, please uh, give this uh, link and uh, people can go and uh, have those course. And this presentation, for those of you who want to have this, in the slideshare.net slash Uh So you can have the entire presentation there, you can download. And for those of you, I'll open for the question in a few minutes. If you want to contact me, rafael at scapin.org. Any questions, anything related to WordPress, okay? I'm also on Twitter, rscapin, Facebook, rscapin. Rscapin is my, my, um, nickname over there, okay? And uh, thank you very much. Merci.
so we can open for questions. Yes. This one, sure. Yep. The, oh, the slide share. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, SlideShare is uh, my repository for all my presentations. Everything I produce, I keep it there. It's, uh, this is a CC, a Creative Commons uh, presentation, so you guys can reuse it as long as you keep my name, don't sell it, and don't change anything. Okay? <laughs> That's the only things I ask people. Yes. Okay, so the question is for which case uh, WordPress is not suitable for websites. Okay, so WordPress initially was born for blogs, okay? And that's the, 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 the default option when you go to the dashboard, it's blogs over there. Of course, you can change to not be a blog. Uh, and then people start to work for, for websites as well. Um, it's a CMS. Like WordPress, a CMS, a content management system. There are many other CMS like Joomla, Drupal, open source as well, so you don't pay any license. But I mean, I difficult to say. Like people do a lot of stuff with WordPress because WordPress, it's uh, it's an it's based on plugins and themes and content. Okay, so your content is totally separate from your layout. Okay, and like. From all those um, CMS I mentioned before, is the one with the biggest number of plugins available. Okay, one of the I think is the biggest CMS we have in the world right now. So many big companies are using WordPress. I mean, it depends if you have a very specific thing. I don't know. I have a specific project. We we can analyze and say, okay, maybe for you. But from what I've seen, like in those years, like WordPress works for like zillions of different things. It depends on your imagination, the plugins you have. And because it's open source, you can always create or develop specific plugins or modules to your uh, installation. Okay? Answer your question? Good. Thank you. More questions? Yes. Plugins, yeah. Imagine plugins as apps. Okay? If you have a smartphone, Okay, you, you install apps. But do you know how many apps you guys have in your smartphones? More than 50, more than 100, more than 1,000? I don't know, some people have. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, WordPress, you have this. Okay, you ha it's a plugin architecture uh, thing. Let's say uh, you need a very specific thing. Let's say you need your, there's one, I'll give an example. There's one plugin you install in WordPress that checks if there's a broken link in your website. Let's say you have many links to websites. So this one works in the background, checking. If it detects a broken link, it warns you, look, this link's not working anymore, okay? So imagine a plugin like an app. It performs a very specific thing in your website and could work on the front end, on the back end of your website, okay? That's basically what a plugin is. Yes, questions? Yes. From uh, how to publish from? From Word? Okay, yeah. If you have um, a text in Microsoft Word, for example, you can copy there. I mean, there's not an issue. But what I recommend you guys to do is first to clean up the text, okay, and then paste over here. When you go to the page in WordPress, you have two tabs at the top, at the upper right, visual and text, okay? The visual one is, is a wizzy wig. What you see is what you get, editor. Like everything you type is the way you're gonna see. You can just paste um, a Word document over here, but sometimes there are little glitches so before this, you can take the text, clean up, put like just a simple text, save as a TXT, and then you're gonna make the change over there. Okay, with the new editor, now the Gutenberg, you're gonna, this is gonna be a little bit more powerful. You can have many options to, to edit, okay? But it's a very simple editor. Some people, what they do, because this is, if you see over here, let's say if I put like bold over here, look at this, I put bold, you see bold. 
If I go under text, this is what I see for the bold. You see for the bold, there's a strong. This is a HTML tag, okay? Look at that. So your text, in fact, in WordPress, it's HTML, but you don't see that unless you click text. For the visual, you only see you know, the, the text itself like a, a WYSIWYG editor. So I recommend you to can use another editor like a HTML editor. If you know HTML, that helps a lot as well. You don't need to, but if you know it's an asset, um, before you paste in your text there. Good? Yes. It, it has, but it's not perfect, okay? As everything Microsoft, don't rely on that stuff. <laughs> okay, yes. Another questions? Yes. Yes, is it, the question is, is it possible to create um, user profiles in WordPress? It is. When you see on the dashboard over here, uh, on, the, on the back on the last, uh, left sidebar, you have users, okay? They're different, there's a hierarchy of users in WordPress. There's the admin, there's the author, uh, there is the, there are many. So let's say I'm gonna create a new user. I just click here, add new user, okay? I, I create a username, email, first name, and everything. And then look at here, there's a role. The role can be, the first one is shop manager because I used to have WooCommerce installed over here, so that could be a, a shop manager, but customer, subscriber, contributor, author, editor, and admin. Admin is the highest level. I don't recommend you have many admins because people can screw up your website easily if they don't know what they're doing. So keep you as an admin or maybe an, another one person, okay? This is the level uh, of users. A roles you, you have in WordPress. Good, thank you. Yeah, the question is, uh, what what happens if I forget my uh, uh, admin password? When I when I log into WordPress, it's also remember me. Uh, lost your password? You're gonna click. Over there, lost your password. This is tied to your email. They may register for that. Unless you don't have access to that email anymore, that could be an issue. But there's always ways you can hack the website to look for this information in a database. But there is this lost your password. So if you forgot a password, click there, lost your password. It's gonna send you an email to the email you register when you create this account so you can reset your password, okay? Yes. Yeah, how Gutenberg is gonna be different than the current editor. Um, there, the thing is, um, let me show you again, I'm gonna just go with a bit. Test Gutenberg. Okay. Yeah. The idea here uh, in the new editor, like we have blocks now, okay? So look, this is a block, this is another block. This is a block called paragraph. Look at that. If I click on the right side here, I can edit this as a HTML. I can duplicate, I can convert to a shared block, I can remove that. So the idea, like they're creating different kinds of blocks, okay? Look, this block here is a quote, okay? This is a paragraph, this is a quote again. And on the right side, you can put also. So the idea, um, it's changing some, they're trying not to be so radical in the change because you no know, people don't um, wanna go like, but in the regular WordPress, you have a very simple editor that doesn't, it's been there for 15 years, okay? So that's the reason they decided to move a little bit like, like subheading, adding, like they divided the, the, your page in different blocks and those blocks, you can change everything inside, okay? That's one of the biggest change I can tell you right now, but it's an evolving project, it's not finished yet, okay? So they have a lot of uh, feedback, people are sending a lot of feedback and they are taking those into account. So the idea is like, this is gonna change more 
in the, in the near future than it is right now, but it's coming. So they, after 15 years, they decide, you know, it's time to update our editor. And that's what they're doing right now. Yes, question? Let's, sorry. Yeah, the themes are, are getting used to, uh, yeah, they're gonna be adapted. There's gonna be no issue, plugins as well. So, because they, they knew about this a long time ago, so they're prepared for the change. Yeah, not an issue. Yes. Sure, the question is uh, how do I can edit my menus in WordPress? I can show you, it's very simple. I'll show you right now. So you go to menus, I have one minute. Um, okay, so and this is a very simple menu, okay? Um, you're gonna see here how to create a bilingual website. You have two menus, let's say English and French, but basically, uh, you can change the label over here, okay? You just check over here, you can change the label, and this is for a page, okay? Let's say home uh, English, whatever. Okay, um, I can create links, a menu for um, posts, for um, when I have a post, I can put this. I can create a menu using a custom link, or I can create a menu for my categories when I have a blog. Okay, imagine you have 1,000 posts, 500 are about Montreal, the hashtag is Montreal, the category is Montreal. I can put Montreal as on my menu, and when I click in Montreal, I'm gonna see the 500 posts related to Montreal. This is powerful, the indexation in WordPress is amazing. Okay, so you guys can uh, have a great thing. So this is basically how you, you do this. You come here and just change and you save the menu, don't forget to save your menu. Okay, so look, if I'm gonna see my website right now, I'm gonna see home English that I just changed it over there. Well, what do you mean menu on the page? Oh, this is, um, well, you, you need to create this in advance and there are many plugins for this kind of thing. They're booking uh, plugins you can install. Then you're gonna work inside the plugin itself, not the page. That's what I recommend you to do. If you wanna do a booking thing, install a plugin or you can create one, but uh, there are plugins for this. Okay, they do a better job, okay? Thank you very much, everybody. I wish you a great day, thank you.